so yeah hi guys so i believe that you guys are aspirant for working in the nhs all right so getting into nhs all right getting into nhs has wide variety of routes all right so you know basically you have to start from scratch and you have to start your uh, competencies get signed in uk and then you can probably start your specialist training all right anybody who has a little bit of idea how to get into the uk system i think only suchismita is only answering and nobody is there so uh, yes, hi suchismita sir no hello so, sir yeah yes please go on uh, sir i don't know much was only a little bit of uh, it that uh, we have to go through plab 1 and plab 2 then we can get license in uh, uk or we can get through there uh, through mrcs or mrcp but uh, for mrcp we have to do the two year uh, i think we have to show, show them two year two year of uh, experience in india or any other country and for mrcs it's not necessary right. just uh, take the mrcs one two then ilts then you can go there directly jo uh, joining i think the specialty training all right that's mm, maybe that's kind of a partly a way that's not completely the way how you how it works all right so yes, sir, <clears> obviously know we know that there are two kind Yeah, yeah, no issues. Yeah. So, all right. So, the first thing that I would like to tell you is that there are two kinds of ways. All right. One is either through the PLAB route. All right. Next is through specialist training. All right, specialist training. And the third one is through competent routes. All right. When we are talking about basically the first one, the PLAB route. All right. the plab route will basically be that first you take your ielts or you take your oet all right first you take your ielts or you take your oet the new thing that has been added recently apart from ielts is oet oet stands for occupational english training all right so either you take your ielts or you take your oet first all right get the desired band all right for oet it's 400 all right For OET, it's four hundred in average, and three fifty in each section. All right, three fifty in each section. But for IELTS, it's seven in each section. All right, and seven point five overall. All right, seven point five overall. so once you get these bands then you are eligible then you are basically eligible to enter into the plab route all right then you write your plab one in anywhere in the world all right there are many centers which is available and the next thing that you can do is to come in uk plab two is only done in uk now only in manchester earlier it was done in london as well now only it is done in manchester you come to uk give your plab two get your gmc registration done and start a non training job all right non training job i'll talk about training and non training job in a little while all right there's a difference between both of them training and a non training job okay so once you do your non training job for one year get your competency sign when i'm talking about competencies what do i mean is there are few criteria that a foundation year 2 candidate all right let me just go scroll down completely all right and explain in in india and in most parts of the world all right in india plus most parts of the world all right we have only one year of internship all right we have only one year of internship but in uk they have two years of internship all right two years which is called as fy1 and fy2 foundation year 1 and foundation year 2 all right when we are talking about foundation year 1 all right this is equivalent to one year of internship that we have done back in india or anywhere in the world all right foundation year 1 basically applies to anybody who has done at least one year of training in the hospital internship all right so once you are done through plab 1 sorry plab 1 and plab 2 both of them then you enter into fy2 
this is the second year of internship as per uk all right second year internship for uk okay i'm only talking for the people those who have done their mbbs i'm not even considering people those who have right now probably started their post graduation in india all right i'm not considering them because they have they can go into different pathways all right so for the mbbs students those who have done their one year of internship and they have passed through PLAB, then they can go through the Foundation Year 2 program directly. Okay. Once you enter into Foundation Year program, there can be two kinds of varieties. All right. One is non-training job. Okay. Another is training. To enter into training, all right, which is only specifically given for the UK candidates, all right, the UK graduates. For us, where we call us as international medical graduate or IMGs, it is tough. All right, it is quite tough to enter into a training program. All right, because people those who have done their five years of medical school get directly into foundation year one and then get into foundation year two. We are an additional burden. All right, all the IMGs are an additional burden to this post. Okay, the training post, I'm talking about the training, not the non training one. All right. All the IMGs are an additional burden. So there are no much seats left. So the competition is very tough if you have to enter. All right. The competition is very, very tough. But also, apart from being tough, there are other criteria that you must qualify to enter into a training post. All right. The most important criteria, I'll tell you. Most important criteria. For OET, you should have 400 in each section. So 50 marks bounce, all right, 50 marks bounce from the one that we already saw for qualifying for writing lab one. All right, if you have to enter into a training post, there is 50 marks bounce, all right, 400 in each section. For IELTS, all right, for IELTS, it's 7.5 in each section. All right, 7.5 in each section. People say that OET is easier than IELTS. I don't know because I haven't taken OET. I just took my IELTS. So I'm not very sure about it. But yes, people do say that people those who are not able to pass in IELTS, they generally do pass in OET. All right, they generally do pass in OET. But still, getting 407.5 in writing in any of them is really difficult. All right, in any of them is really difficult. But it is not impossible because I scored 7.5 in writing. All right, I scored 7.5 in writing IELTS. So it's not difficult, but uh, it's sorry, it's difficult, but it's not impossible. All right, it's not impossible. If you have the right strategy, if you know what the examiners are looking for, 7.5 and 400 is not a difficult task. All right, we'll come back to IELTS later on. So when, once we know that we have been doing this foundation year, right, I've told you the most important criteria for entering into it. All right, now, most of the people, those who enter, FY2 are non-training post. All right, they are non-training post. What do I mean by non-training post? Non-training post means that you have not entered into the staircase of qualifying for a specialist. All right, you haven't entered. Non-training post, you have your competencies. All right, signed. What is competencies here? Basically, it's few procedures all right, few techniques, few cases that you have handled yourself, all right, few protocols that you that the NHS has given and you have followed. So once you do few things and you are rotating in different departments, when you are doing a foundation year two non-training post, you get your competency signed by whom? By your HOD or here you call as consultant basically, all right? Once the consultant signs your competencies, that means you are eligible, all right? You're eligible to apply for a training post. After this, you'll be eligible to apply for training post. All right. So when I'm training eligible to apply for training post, all right, that means, that means that first you are in a non-training post, you understood how the NHS works, all right? Understanding the UK system, basically. 
all right the uk system and the nhs how does the nhs works once you understand how the nhs works you have done the basic procedures all right you have done the basic procedures which an fy2 graduate which an fy2 graduate from uk should know all right should know now you also know all those kinds of procedures techniques you have handled the cases by yourself emergency cases you have fulfilled the few protocols understanding them applying them in your daily practice and then your consultant will sign it all right non training post people generally do it for a year generally all right generally but there are cases there are people who I have known who couldn't complete all the competencies all right they were not able to get the competency signed within a year so they had to take another 6 months to complete all the cases or the scenarios that you must do as a fy2 graduate all right as a fy2 doctor so it depends on you you can do it a little quicker probably in 8 9 months or you can take one good amount of year to understand and then you can move on to the training post or sometimes it might takes longer more than a year as well all right so now if we have done if we just chalk it out now you have done your plat 2 you got your gmc registration you entered into a fy2 non training post all right non training post you have completed one year of work then you try for a training post training post all right now between this one year all right there can be many scenarios either you directly go for a training post or in between this one year while you are working you can give the examinations mrcp mrcs mrc ph mrc og and so on all right and so on once you are done with the first step of any of these all right you do not have to go you have an option basically you get an option of not going into the training post rather directly going into the core training one core training one all right once you have done this and when you enter into core training one this will be your uh, what do you call training post training post remember you must be in a training post to climb up the ladder to consultant all right you must be in a training post a non training post all right a non training post will give you experience money it will uh, increase your portfolio all right portfolio generally means your cv all right cv or a resume here they call it portfolio it will increase your portfolios all right adding more amount of experience work experience all right new amount new procedures new cases and everything that you have you have handled all right but you are not climbing any ladder all right you are not progressing not climbing or progressing as a progressing towards consultant all right hello hello goro Hello. Hello. Where are you there? Hello. You there, Gora? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys can hear me, or you guys cannot hear me now. No, no, no. Your uh, screen got stuck, and we are not able to hear you. All right. Since when? Uh, since last one minute, I guess. After right. the training post, you told. Uh, I but not advantages of non training advantages all right uh, next slide next slide yeah yeah from here right. yes so so basically i was saying guys that uh, 
the non-training post, you will be having your experience. You will be earning money. You will be increasing your portfolio, which is basically your CV. All right. But you will not be climbing or progressing towards a consultant. All right. You will not be progressing. Okay. So what would happen in such scenarios would be that you would be earning money. You will be living a very good life all over here. All right. But then you are not becoming consultant. consultant. It's just like working like an MO. All right. Working like an MO in India, back in India. Okay. So you must be in a, you must be in a training post. All right. You must be in a training post to become a consultant. All right. Become a consultant. That's why training post is important. So most of the people, what they do is they enter into a training post after F, after first year, they go into the training post doing MO again. All right. Doing a kind of MO again. What happens in that scenario is you get a lot of time preparing for MRCP, MRCS, or any other specialty that you want to choose for. All right, you get a lot of time at that moment because the first year that you're working as an FI2, you have a lot of work and you need to understand the NHS system. All right, it takes you three, four months to understand very well, and then you can probably work in the nights. Initial times, you might be a lot afraid quite a lot whether you want to work in the night times alone because you would be the only. Uh, probably your only FI2 who would be working in the night. All right, only FI2 who would be working in the night. Okay. Now, any any doubt till yet? Started from GMC, IELTS, uh, foundation year, non-training post, and such. Any any okay. issues till yet? Okay, in FI1 when they'll be working, uh, will they be getting salary or they'll be paid? FI1 or FI2? FI1. Why will they work in FI1? Like you told, they'll be getting training. They will be getting training. Like people, those who have done their internship, all right, people who okay. have done the training, completed their internship, they will enter into FI2. They, okay. have a, they have a chance of entering to FI1, again, which is very tough because it is reserved for the UK graduates who are passing their okay. MBBS. So entering into this is, again, very, very tough. All right, and tough, but it's not impossible. People do it. All right, people have done it in the past. People do it now as well. All right, one of my friends has entered into FI1, so it's not difficult, but it's quite tough. All right, it's very, very tough to enter, but it's not impossible. All right, okay, those who have not done internship from India, they'll be entering in FI1. They'll be entering in FI, but those who have not done their internship, they're not eligible from India at least. They're not eligible. Okay, okay, from if India, they are part not... from the if they're part from the foreign country like FMGs and they have completed internship, they can enter in FI1 or FI2? For, for people, those who have done it from like uh, Russian countries and other countries where they do not do their internship, not eligible. Not okay, eligible, like, still, in, not eligible. like in China, they do internship then? If they do internship in China, then they can do it. Then they can enter into FI1. Okay, means they have to pass FMG exam in India, then they can give PLAB. Then they can give PLAB and they, then, then they can enter into FI1, yeah. Okay, if they have not given FMG exam, they can't uh, give PLAB. No, no, they can give PLAB. There is nothing, okay. no relation with FMG, no relation with Indian examination, no relation with Indian PG. It doesn't matter. You just so need to have they, an MBBS degree. Okay, if they clear PLAB 1 and 2, they will be entering FI2 and how much they will be getting paid? All right, so when it comes to salary, all right, now let's talk about few things about salary, all right. So salary will be generally ranging, depends upon the trust. All right. Depends upon trust. When I call, when I use the term trust, I mean hospitals. All right. I mean hospitals in UK. All right. So it depends upon the trust where you are working, depend upon the city where you are working. All right. But the average ranging is from 32,000. 32,000 pounds. All right. 32,000 pounds per year. All right. Per year. But this okay. is not your... This is not your complete salary, all right? This is not your complete salary, okay? Let me tell you what your complete salary is. So if you divide 32, <clears throat> if you divide 32,000 for a period of, say, a year, all right? How much monthly do you are getting? Something around, uh, take it, two point something. How much? Two point something, how much? Uh, let me That do. is important. 2.6. Yeah, 2.6. 2.6 right all right so this is 2.6 all right so let me just put it in lakhs so that it's easier all right 2.2 lakh 60,000 pounds per month all right 2,600 uh, I think it is rupees 
Yeah. Two lakh six thousand rupees. Yeah, twenty six hundred pounds per month. All right, twenty six hundred pounds. This is before tax. All right, this is this salary is before tax. When you get your tax, all right, you get thirty percent of tax deduction. All right, thirty percent of tax deduction. So basically, you're getting around two thousand pounds per month. All Means right, two lakh rupees in Indian currency. Uh, yeah, a little less than that, but yeah, approximately you can calculate. Approximately, that. okay. Yeah, but this so, is not just. This is not still not your final one. This is still not your final one. All right. Let me tell you a few more things which a lot of people do not know. All right. <clears throat> First, there is something called as weekend allowance. All right, weekend allowance. When you're talking about weekend allowance, you have your rota made. All right, your rota is already made. Suppose if your rota falls on Sunday or it falls on Saturday. You will be getting extra paid for these two days, extra paid from your what two thousand pounds. You will be getting extra paid for these two days. That is what is called as weekend allowance. If your rota falls, definitely within a month at least you will have three, three working weekends. At least three working weekends. All right, out of six, six no out of eight. All right, out of eight or sometimes out of ten, you will be having at least three, at least. All right, I'm talking about the minimum that you can have. That is three working weekends. All right. So that would okay. add on. That would add on to your salary. That will be adding on to your salary. That is the first thing. Next. Second. Second, you call as overwork allowance. All right. Overwork allowance. What do I mean by overwork allowance? Suppose if your duty. All right. Suppose if your work hours is only eight hours that day. If you have done eight hours, fifty minutes, you are getting paid extra for those fifty minutes. All right, you are getting paid for those extra hour fifty minutes. What happens is, if your duty is for eight hours, one hour is your handover time. All right, one over one hour is your handover time. This handover time is also actually being paid. All right, is paid. Even if you hand over within thirty minutes and you leave, you will still be paid for this one hour handover time. All right, you still be paid for this one hour and over time. So this is also extra. All right, this is also extra. So by the time you come back home after a month, the salary that they put is generally ranges from twenty five hundred pounds to twenty seven hundred pounds. All right, twenty five hundred pounds to twenty seven hundred pounds. All right. In places, in places where you are working in bigger cities like London, Manchester. All right, London, Manchester, and then you are working in suppose Birmingham. All right, you're working in Leeds, and so on. All right, and so on. Important places, bigger places, bigger cities. In such places, you get something called as annual allowance. Only in bigger cities. Why do you get annual allowance? Because the cost of living. All right, they call it COL. All right, COL money. So the cost of living in such cities are very high. All right, such cities are very high, so they give you an annual uh, annual allowance of twelve hundred pounds, which will be distributed one hundred pounds every month. Additionally, all right, one hundred pounds additionally every month. So that is equivalent to almost ten thousand rupees. All right, ten thousand rupees. So additionally, they give you in such bigger cities. All right, only in bigger cities, not in every city. Okay, that is what called it annual allowance. Okay. Suppose apart from this overwork, all right. Apart from this overwork, all right. The third most, the third which people generally do when they do want to earn, all right. When they do want to earn a lot of money, what they do is they take up. In India also we do right. What do we do if you have to work in another hospital? They will take multi hospitals. Or what, what is extra that, what is what is that called as? Moonlighting. Moon, moonlighting? No. What? Uh, what do you call that work? When you work in different hospitals for only short period of time. Part time. Part time. Contract basis? No, not part time. Contract basis, okay. Not contract. Yeah, you work on a contract basis, but only for a short period of time. So wherever you get time, you go and just work there. What is it called? In India, also we call the same name. No, not freelancing. That's the computer-based word. But yeah. Okay, you only tell Gaurav. Hmm. You only no, tell. 
Oh, I'm I'm a little bit shocked that how don't you know? We might have heard it, but we don't remember it now. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So the third most important thing is locum duties. Must have heard the word, right? Locum works in India. Also, we do locum works. All right. If you work and go and work wherever there is a deficit in the amount of uh, students or the doctors, those who are working. So you can do extra locum duties if you are free and if you feel like earning more, you can do extra locum duties. All right. Depending upon the trust again. Depending upon the trust, one. All right. One day. All right. One day of locum duties, you are generally get paid for approximately two hundred pounds to anywhere between 400 pounds all right for one day if it's a night duty if it's a night time you get from 300 to 500 pounds a day all right 500 pounds a day so it depends which trust you're working all right it depends upon the trust obviously but you, you you can earn a lot of money all right you can earn a lot of money i have known people those who take home salary all right the take home salary is basically all right, the take home salary is somewhere in between 3200 to 3800 per month. All right, so that's like earning approximately 3.2 lakhs to 3.8 lakhs a month. All right, 3.8 lakhs a month, roughly. All right, roughly, not exactly, but yeah, roughly. So these are the three different ways that you can earn, all right, earn money. Apart from that, all right, apart from that. Okay. All right, apart from that, when you're... Yeah, apart from that, if you are uh, basically, uh, you know, see, trying to uh, earn money in a very variety of ways. So I've already told you there are three different kinds of ways. But when you're talking about a specialist training, all right, when you're talking when you're going up the ladder, all right, you're going up the ladder to become a consultant. All right. And here is your... FY2. All right, here is your FY2. So as you jump year by year, as you jump year by year, there is a growth in your salary. All right, there is a growth in salary. The growth in salary comes in all different ways. Your weekend allowance also increases as, suppose if your weekend allowance in FY2 is only 80 pounds per Saturday. All right, per Saturday that you're working, it's only 80 pounds. Once you go to the next level, probably it will become 100 or 120. So as you keep growing, weekend allowance also increases. All right, weekend allowance increases. Extra hours allowance increases. All right, extra hours allowance also increases. Your annual allowance, if you're working in a bigger cities, all right, that would also increase. So in terms of money, all right, in terms of money, if I have to tell, it in an FY2 post, all right, if, you, if you're single, all right, if you're single and only uh, if you're single, you're self-sufficient. You have a lot of money to save. All right, you have a lot of money to save. So I'm saying in an average lifestyle, all right, and an average lifestyle, depend upon your lifestyle, definitely. But on an average lifestyle, yeah, you're self-sufficient and you can save a lot of money. All right, if you're married, suppose, at an FY2 level and you are the sole bread earner. All right, you are the sole bread earner. In that scenario, money is too less all right money is too less fy2 you cannot sustain if you are the sole bread earner if you're married and both of you are a doctor and both of you are working all right you both are working you are still self-sufficient you might not save money but you are self-sufficient you can manage all right you can manage after after marriage if you still have kids all right kids do not plan kids if you are entering into an fy2 all right never plan kids or if you're entering into an, if I want to come to UK and if you have kids already, please go into a specialist training program. Don't enter into FI2. It's very difficult. All right. Managing is very difficult. You cannot be, you won't be able to manage. All right. All right. So these were about the few things that an FI2, FI1, the pathways, the IELTS, the OET, which one is important, the training, the non training, the specialist training. Okay. Okay, right. after uh, completing that FLAB 1 and FLAB 2, which one you recommend? F1, Y or FY2? 
Oh, see, uh, I would recommend F Y one. All right, I would recommend F Y one. Why? I'll tell you why as well. All right. So once you enter into, once you enter into F Y one, all right, F Y one. Okay. What happens is you are directly into a training post. You're directly into a training post, and when you go into F Y two, you are again into the training post because it's like a promotion. All right, it's like a promotion. So you are again into the training post. You don't have to look for any training post. But if you join in FY2, which will be a non-training post, all right, which will be a non-training post, you have to look for a training post very avidly. It's very difficult to find a training post after that. All right, little difficult. It's not like you will not get. Obviously, you would get. It might take some time, but then you would definitely get. In the long run, you will definitely get. It's not like you will never get. You will definitely get. It must be a little, little difficult. But once you enter into FY1, it becomes like just passing from standard eight to standard nine in the same school. So once you enter into the training post, once you jump into the uh, FY2, it will be the training post. Once you enter into CT1, it is automatically a training post. All right, it is automatically a training post. But from here, if you FY2, if you want to enter into CT1, CT1 also can have a non-training post. All right, CT1 will also have a non-training post. So you have to look for CT1, which is a training post. All right, after FY2, if you want to enter into CT1, you have to look for CT1, which is a training post, which is again a little difficult. All right, which is again a little difficult. But obviously, little difficult in the sense means it's difficult to find a good job in Ames Hospital, something like that, probably. All right. So you do, do you do get jobs. You do get you do get a training spot, but then it's a little bit difficult. You have to look very avidly to find a spot for yourself. All right. So that is why I would recommend if you can join into FI FI one, it would be easier. But then again, it will be like you are doing two years of training, like an internship. All right. It depends on you. It depends on you completely. If you if you are here to learn the UK system and you have a lot of time, if you are very young. Keep doing it. Start from FY1. If you feel that you have already worked in India for two, three years or something like that, join FY2. All right, join FY2. That's it. Won't, I won't suggest you guys. All right, I I won't suggest you guys to uh, enter into FY1 in that particular moment. All right, in that particular moment, I won't tell you. All right. So that is it. Any any doubt you have till now? So that okay, I okay. You just... told uh, about uh, pleb and uh, what are the other routes? Like you told competent route. What about that? All right. So I, I told about uh, pleb routes. Now there are two different routes. One is specialist. All right. So specialist route. That means you start with MRCP or MRCS. All right. You start with MRCP, MRCS, and so on. Any specialist training. You finish them, give IELTS or OET, enter into ST1 post. Again, which people think is easy. No, it's difficult because you have learned MRCP, MRCS, you have done where? Back home. The question that they ask you in that the question that they ask you in the uh, interview is, do you have any NHS experience? All right, do you have any NHS experience? Once you say this as no, all right, your portfolio, basically your CV becomes weak. All right, your portfolio, your CV becomes weak. All right, so this is a very important question. All right, this is a very important question. Do you have any NHS experience? Suppose if I'm working through FI2, all right, I've given my MRCP, MRCS or whatever speciality, and then I'm looking for a, uh, I have done my core training one and core training two, and then I'm entering into ST1. All right, then I'm entering into ST1. Do you think they will take me or they will take you? Because I have the entire NHS experience. I know how it works. And why will they take you? Because you have just new, you have just come from a different country and you don't have any experience of how NHS works. They can't have, they don't have enough time to teach you from the beginning how NHS works and how everything would work. They can't teach you, right? They expect you to know it from the beginning. They expect you to know it from the beginning. That is the reason why a lot of people over here, they do is they take experience, all right? Okay, once again, we have a question from Adib Kanunga. Can you see that? Oh, one MRCP? second, yeah. Yeah, one second. So you this experience, either you call it observership, here you call it as shadowing. All right, here you call it as shadowing. This is basically non-hand-trained. This is not hands-on. Uh, this is not hands-on electives. All right, this is not hands-on training. This is non-hands-on. 
that means you would just be looking how the nhs works you would not be interacting with the patients either you will be doing any procedures or nothing nothing at all mrcp mrcs are the only two specializations no any specialization all right mrcp mrcs mrcog all right mrcpch which is child specialist all right mrcp radiology all right radiology all right then mrcem emergency medicine there are 20 27 there are 27 kinds of specialties all right 27 specialties that you can enter okay here in uk if you are thinking about internal medicine there is nothing called internal medicine all right there is something called as acute medicine all right acute medicine if you want to enter into internal medicine suppose cardio you can directly choose cardiology all right you can directly choose cardiology you don't have to enter and undergo uh, three years of postgraduate training that we go in a normal internal medicine and then you go into cardiology no once you enter into cardiology in ct1 ct2 and st1 and st2 they will teach you all about internal medicine in general in st3 four five they will teach you about cardiology all right this is like just like us uh, residency once you enter into the core branch like core means like specialist specialist branch all right super speciality branches you can directly enter into super like you can directly choose neurosurgery all right you can directly choose neurosurgery once you choose neurosurgery you are entering into that i'll show you a few pathways i have uh, i have taken few pathways from the gmc website and i have put it here we'll go back to that all right i have another question now can we get the experience by working working where uh, dr pratyaya right all right uh, why, why do why do you uh, why like why do you ask me where do you think that your experience by working working in back in india is prataya online prataya yeah. i, I know in you can we get the experience by working so once you start working in uk how do you think that you are going to work only after you either you the, your next question is if you can do your frcs after we complete our ms surgery from india and give mrcs yes you can do that you can do your um, surgery in india and then you can give mrcs and then you can come here and do your frcs frcs is basically fellowship right so basically you are registering as a fellowship which will be probably six months or one one year course so when you start when you are done your mrcs and you come to uk to start working you'll be entering into either st1 or st2 or st3 you can apply to any of the post all right you can apply to the any of the post if you feel confident of st3 you can do that if you feel you are no you want to learn how the nhs system works from the beginning you can join at st1 but you can definitely apply right you can apply for st3 as well you can apply for st3 because you've already done your surgery in back in india but but all right let me tell you people who join after fy2 who join to core training one a road runner uh, I, i'm sorry but that's what your name displays here road runner you can just speak up all right because it's difficult to understand sorry you said sorry sorry for what i didn't get you salai unmute him what is he Road runner. Mm, can MRC been done after completing MBBS or do we need the postgraduate? No, you can do, um, Dr. Adib, you can do your MRCM after completing MBBS. No post graduation degree required. Anything, anything in UK, MBBS is more than enough. All right, MBBS is more than enough. You don't need that. You can enter, but the only thing is that you have to enter into the MRCS. Yeah, what about MRCS? You know, write a complete question because it's difficult to understand. I have. Uh, sorry uh, okay guys uh, you know just wait all right just wait let's uh, just wait all right just wait so that i can take the questions later on all right i'll just give you time to ask questions all right because it becomes a little difficult all right so what i was saying is but i have seen people all right but i have seen people who after fy2 who joined who joined sct1 all right they thought that they are very eligible and they will be able to do all right they directly joined they didn't complete fy2 but they directly joined ct1 you can do that as well all right you can do that but in a non training post all right non training post because ct1 is nothing like an sho job all right which we know that we can do it all right which we know that we can do it in india all right but in but in uk but in uk if you enter into a ct1 and if your consultant sees that you do not all right you don't stand 
the competencies. That means you do not know the procedures, how the NHS works. You do not stand the competencies. He will ask you to go back to FI2 and start your year and then come back. So basically you get demoted. All right, basically you get demoted also. All right. It's not like being demoted. It's not, it's not a black thing on your portfolio, but then your consultant will tell you very politely that please go back to FI2, complete your competencies and then come back and work as a CT1. So that can happen. That can happen. You might be overconfident because you might have worked in India for a quite long time. You might know a lot of different procedures. Does that count here? No. Knowing a procedures is an advantage for you as a doctor, but does it count in UK? No. Why? You do not have experience. You do not know how the NHS works here. A lot of things, not a lot of things. Everything in here that you do is about ethics. If you neglect ethics, you will have your GMC registration taken away. All right. You will have your GM, GMC registration taken away. All right. Back in India, we don't have that things. All right. Back in India, we do not have that things that your license gets cancelled. But here it does. All right. Here it does in a very large amount. All right. In a very, very large amount. So everything works according to how you are proceeding in an HS environment. That is why experience in UK is required. All right. So you might be confident back in India, but here you should be a little scared. All right. Little scared because you do not know the, how the system works. Once it takes two, three, four months, once you know how the system works, you can be confident because you know that you know the procedures that you have done back home. Plus, you have got the idea how the NHS system works. You know what to do, when to do, and when to refer them to the specialist, when to not refer them. So what are your limitations as a doctor of whatever post you are in? That is very important. All right, that is very very important. All right, in India, as a as a doctor, when you're working as an MO, you can give any amount of variety of drugs, asking your consultant. Here, you cannot do that. All right, here you cannot do that. Even for prescribing antibiotics, at times you need to consult. In India, do we consult giving antibiotics? No, most of the times we don't. But here you do need to consult your consultants. All right, consultants are your registrar. All right, your registrar. So it's a little difficult. It's a little different than what we have been following in India or any other country for that sake. But then uh, you must be aware, you must be knowing that NHS system is really, really important. Ethics part is the most important part when you're working in a NHS environment. All right. So you cannot neglect that. All right. So okay another one is left this is uh, competency i guess competency route what is that all right competencies right all right guys so <clears throat> you have posted a few questions all right i'll just take it after this all right so competencies pathway is basically for those who have completed their um, you know completed their mbbs either from the five countries which is valid in uk as well all right the five countries namely stands for either you have done it from uk or you have done it from australia all right you have done it from new zealand or you have done it from us or you have done it from Canada. If you have, all right, if you have. If you haven't, if you haven't, but if you have passed your examinations from Australia and New Zealand, US, step one, step two, Canada, if you have passed your step one, step two, all right, you can enter into the competencies pathway. All right, you will be forbidden to write PLAB. All right, it's an exception. All right, it's an exception because degrees from these countries or not even degrees even the qualifying examination if you have passed you can directly enter into uk all right you can directly enter into uk so that is what is called as competencies pathway all right competencies pathways okay uh yeah so this is uh what it is all right okay now, uh, there is another pathway i have heard that uh, uh, if you want to enroll in any pg course in uk you can directly go and uh, pay some amount and you can do no need of play or something what is that that is not a pathway that is not a pathway all right uh, that is not a pathway and you don't enter into it it's basically it's non recognized by the gmc all right okay. gmc does not recognize it you can come and work here in king's college london okay all right king's college where you have to pay probably 25 lakhs a year all right same as you would be paying in, in india in these particular amount of time you will be they will be asking you to write plab or they will be asking you to write a mrcp all right, nothing okay. different. But this okay. degree Means that you are only taking, they will allow to study. Yeah, they'll allow you to study. But this degree that you are taking is not valid here. Even GMC doesn't recognize this. You this degree not even valid in India, back in India. So it doesn't make any sense. Okay. It's just that you are spending your time. You are, you are uh, eligible to uh, stay in UK. Plus, after you are done with your third year, after you are done, with, because this is for almost for uh, three and a half years. So after your second year, they will be putting you into the training post. 
like, just like the internship, you go into the hospital, all right, they'll be putting you into the training post and then they'll be asking you to write MRCP or PLAB and whatever things that you have taken for. So it's basically, okay. I, I don't feel that it is really uh, beneficial rather than people yeah, it's not spending 25 lakhs, they can directly write mm. PLAB and direct, directly come here and work, be independent and then write their uh, specialist examination. Okay, now we can take questions from, let unmute all. I'm, uh, I'm making you host again and you please, okay, I, I'm, I'll be unmuting. Yeah, okay, so let I me take few, all. yeah, let me take a few questions first. Uh, that is already there in uh, the chat box. So I have, uh, sir, I have a question. Okay, one by one, one by one. Uh, yeah, uh, g give me, give me just two minutes so that I can just take a few okay, questions, sure. which is already in the chat box, all right? So I have a gap of two years post MBBS. Do I have a decent chance to get accepted? It doesn't matter. Gap of two years, that means you have not done anything or you were preparing for your PG, uh, the Galaxy tab. Okay, yes. next. Hello. Okay. He didn't speak anything. All right. So there is FRC pathway in some specialities, but it is clearly written on those pages that it is not equivalent to consultant practicing in UK. However, there is no clear cut other pathway for some branches through specialist pathway. Does PLAB and FIT pathway apply for those postgraduates? PSM pathology. Pathology is there. All right. I don't know if you do not know. Uh, pathology is there. All right. Give me, a, uh, give me one second and I can post you uh, for pathology. One second. Uh, there is something for histopathology as well. There is something for hematology specifically. There is something for immunology. All right. Uh, for pathology, one second. Uh, pathology, pediatric surgery, pediatric surgery. All right. There's nothing for only pathology. There's something called histopathology. All right. There's something called histopathology. There's nothing only pathology. Okay. So for that, for those things that you do not have, you would have to look for any other different kinds of, uh, different kinds of branches that you have. All right different kinds of branches because here there are mostly mixed branches which is available okay now galaxy to imagine uh, and sir means you are having uh, no experience just you are preparing for pg no no issues all right you, you do not have to worry about it since you were preparing for pg you can just mention that because when you are applying for your gmc registration they will be asking you what did you do after you passed your mbbs till today all right till today Right. So they'll be asking you the same thing. All right. So once you write that you are preparing for your examination and you can give your valid reasons that you are preparing and then you have uh, pro probably proof to show that you are uh, you are reading for your examination. Nothing to worry about. They just want to okay. know that you they just want to know that you are accountant of the time period that you were not doing anything. What were you doing? All right. They want to know what were you doing in that period. If you're studying for USMLE, people do study for USMLE for a year or a two. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. You're still very, very valid and very eligible, just like any other candidate for an FI2 post. Okay. Our uh, roadrunner asked, he failed in FMG, but he passed PLEB 1. So uh, he can do PLEB or not? He can, he can continue doing PLAB 2. Doesn't matter. You can continue your PLAB 2. You can come here. You can take a coaching if you wish to. If you do not, then it's also fine. And then you can continue doing it. Yeah. It doesn't matter with FMG. I know people. After I know a few. Yeah, sorry. Just a second. Yeah. I, I know a yeah, yeah. few people. I know a few people. Those who have done their uh, MBBS from abroad and they never gave FMG. Right? They never gave FMG. Because they always wanted to work in UK. So they directly gave PLAB 1, PLAB 2, PASS, GMC, working in Manchester where I'm staying right now. I'm in Manchester. Any suggestion for coaching? Okay, Roadrunner, you can contact our Gaurav, Dr. Gaurav. He is also coaching for PLAB. He is giving coaching. You can contact him. Or you can contact me. I will send you the contact. Alright. Okay, next question is, like Gaurav, if you have uh, completed PLAB 1 and you go to UK, can you start doing work? No, no, you cannot. You cannot. Okay. No, you can't. Okay, another question we have from Prataya. How are the mar matching rates for surgical branch after plan? All right. So, yeah, obviously, uh, you see, it's a little bit difficult. I have already told you that uh, first preference is always given to the UK graduates. All right. Definitely. Because they, what we do probably as an MO or as an internship, right? When we do stuff in internship, they are probably doing it since their second or third year. Can you mute some? Can you mute all, please? There's some too much of noise. Or make me the host so that I can mute people. Okay, okay, I'm giving you. Uh, which one I shall make you host? Uh, the one which is mute. 
Okay. Yeah, done. All right, thanks. Somebody still wants to, okay. So, okay, yes, so those want to come. Yeah, yeah, I've just done that. Yeah. So what I'm saying is, yes, obviously it is difficult, you see, because people are already entering, people are already there into this pathway. Which pathway? They're already into this training pathway. Plus the UK graduates. So there is a lot of burden which is there on the surgical field. All right. Not only surgical field, in any other field. All right. So what happens is, once you are done your FI2 and you wait, I know a lot of, I know people who have done MRCS. All right. First step, they did, your, they did their one year of training in FI2 here. And they applied for core training or they, they applied for core training, but they failed to enter. Why? They failed to enter. Why? Because their CV was a little weak. All right. The CV was a little weak. When you're doing a shadowing over here, all right. When you do some shadowing over here, what happens is there are few things that you must add into your CV or your portfolio. That is basically called as auditing. All right. Auditing. All right. So once you start auditing over here, it will be added into your CV. A lot of people, those who are there in UK as a UK graduate, all right, there are a few checklists that you must be aware when you are entering into a surgical field. Basically any field, all right, basically any field. So few checklists, for example, first thing I would say that your IELTS score will be a little bit of mattering if you are entering into the foundation year one program in the beginning or a co-training program in a training pathway. That means if you're scoring 7.5 in each or if in OAT, if you're scoring 400, you can directly enter into the training pathway. Once you enter into the training pathway, what happens is you can directly jump from training to training. You don't have to look for options. Okay. It's like, just like getting promoted from class to class to and class into the same, in the same uh, school. All right. So there is no much difference in that. All right. Next thing, if you are that, that's the first checklist. All right. The second checklist is you must get as possible all right you need to be behind your consultant to teach you all right to teach you and you have to know those procedures yourself to show them that you are competent enough once they sign your competencies it goes into your online portfolios all right there is something over here called online portfolio so once you go for the interview into a, in a different hospital you don't have to take any papers all right you don't have to take any papers because everything all your all, everything that you have done in uk will be online any hospital can see that any hospital all right. So that's like very transparent over here. All right. Everything is very transparent. Second thing. All right. Third thing in your checklist will be if you have done any research works. All right. If you have done any research work, if you have published anything, if you were a co-author or if you have done something in UK. All right. In UK or if you have done something, um, if you have published some articles in a international journal. All right. International journal, not in the Indian journals. Okay, even the even the poster presentation or the paper presentation in India will not count. Will not count if you have done it on an international uh, standard or if you have done it in an international platform. That might count, but doing in India is not. It's not going to count, right? That is one thing. Okay. Next, when okay. oh wait, have you wait. Got a one thing? okay. Once you have done your shadowing, all right. Once you have done your shadowing, in when you are doing your shadowing, you can do your um what do we call that you can do your uh, extra checklist which will be basically auditing all right auditing work here auditing work works because of the ethics scenario all right ethics scenario all right so um, if you uh, for the surgical field i think that was dr prataya uh, probably you can contact me because since i have uh, already written this mrcs i'm waiting for this result all right so you can contact me and i can tell you what all checklist is important for a surgical field all right yeah thanks uh, next question after completing MBBS, do I have to do internship in India or should I do FI1 in UK? Okay, uh, Dr. Adib, if you have done your internship back in the country that you have done your MBBS, then I would ask you to just enter into FI2. All right, FI2 for entering into FI1, as I've already told you, must need 7.5 in IELTS and 400 in OAT. Once you do that, only then probably we can, you know, go ahead and talk about entering into FI1. All right. Does PG degree and post MBBS bound count for anything in any pathway? No. Yes, obviously count in any way in the sense means obviously it will count as an experience. All right. Because you've already done your, uh, suppose you've done your medicine in the India and you have worked for probably a year or a two. And obviously that will count. And once you've done your MRCP and when you come here, you will be directly entering into ST3 or you can apply for ST1. Once you do that, I do not think that would be a problem, but it will not count much because I, as I told you, what they think, what they know, they know that you are already a PG graduate. You would have done everything that is required for a medicine uh, postgraduate uh, student. 
But then the problem is, do you have a UK experience is a question. All right, again, do you have a UK experience? So suppose if you are working as, if you have come or applying as a doctor who has done the PG from India, and there is some guy who has done the PLAB course and is entering FI2, CT1, CT2 and applying for the same post, whom they will prefer? They'll prefer the candidate who has been working for three, four years in India rather than they will be, uh, you know, they will be uh, asking you to join their hospital. The few differences are there, very little difference, but then you can do that if you are confident enough. All right, you can do that if you're confident enough. Doesn't matter in much case. Depends on how your interview goes, what question they have been asked, how you have replied. Have they asked you the question about UK experience? If not, then you can apply into ST1. You can start with ST1. It is not a very big deal. Once you start with ST1, get your competency signed, skip ST2, join ST3. Because you know that you have that knowledge back from India. You just needed a little bit of experience from UK experience. You have done that in ST1 and now you can skip ST2 and move into ST3. You can do that. Okay, Gaurav, I want to say one thing that if this uh, video ends because it is already time, it will it may end automatically. So again, you can join by clicking that link that I have shared with you. Okay, you can continue. Gaurav. Yes, yeah, all of you can join the same link. All right, all right. Next. So would the matching rates for surgical branch improve for IMG's post Brexit? Uh, no, I would say no, not much. It, 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 doesn't, um, it doesn't matter. Brexit will affect uh, other fields, but it's not gonna affect medical fields in a very large scale. All right, it's not gonna affect medical field in a very large scale, all right. Can I go for OAT than IELTS, which is better, sir? All right, see, I don't know, that's a very big name. All right, I don't know your name, but then um, seriously, I have no idea about OAT because I've never given OAT, but yeah, a lot of people say on different forums that OAT is better. For people, those who have failed IELTS in the first attempt, you should go for OAT for the next attempt, I, I feel so. But personally, I went for IELTS and uh, I scored 7.5 in every field. So for, for me, uh, IELTS was easier than OAT I, because I have no idea about OAT. So sorry, I can't answer that question. But according to what the uh, consensus goes for in different forums, uh, they say that OAT is better than IELTS because it's related to your medical field because everything, writing, listening, speaking, and everything would be related to medicine. And probably you will fare much better there than IELTS. All right. Uh, we have two school of thoughts about the jobs and prospects in the UK. Some say the job scenario is good and very good, whereas on most forums we have people hunting for jobs and certainly with no job opportunities. What is the scenario exactly? All right. So you see, that is what I'm trying to tell you. All right. Now there are two candidates. All right. One has done the shadowing in UK, or the, you can say they have done their observership in UK, and one which is a fresh graduate coming from India and applying. Who do you think they will take? They'll take the candidate who has even done for one month if they has they have rotated in UK, all right? They would take that candidates obviously first because they know the scenario. The, the registrars, the consultants don't have to knock their heads in order to make them understand, don't do this, don't do this, this is the way, this is the way. All right, you get my point, I believe, all right? So it's most of the people, those who have not done their observership, all right? Most of the people those who have not done their observership here in UK face that issue. That is one point. Next point. All right, next point. People do not look for jobs in many, many cities. They want to go, they want to work in London. London is saturated. Manchester is saturated. Birmingham is saturated. If you are looking for jobs in bigger cities, obviously it is saturated. Everybody wants to work there. Who doesn't want to work in some city like London? All right. So they forget to look for some small cities where you can get easily. The jobs are very, very easily available. People are working double shifts in hospitals. I know one of my friends was working in Kings Lynn. Like that could be a new place for you guys. Kings Lynn. All right. She was working in Queen Elizabeth Hospital. She is working sometimes two jobs, like uh, twice the workload. Why? Because they are short of uh, doctors there. Why aren't people applying there? All right. She is getting 2,700 pounds every month. Why are people not applying in subsidies? All right. That is the second kind of scenario that I'm telling you. All right. Next. People suggest any books, uh, please suggest any books for MRCP part one. I want to make my CV stronger. So before PLAP two, I'm going to pass MRCP part one. All right. Okay, okay. Roadrunner, you can contact uh, Dr. Gaurav directly uh, or you can contact me. I'll send you the contact to contact him. Yeah, Dr. Dr. Prataya. All right, Dr. Prataya, you can connect with me on uh, probably what's Okay, Gaurav, happened. you can do like this. Can you write on screen your uh, email ID this so that they can contact you? All right, so yeah. So just a second. 
all right so you can just contact me through my email id all right you guys can see my screen right all right yeah if anyone have been doubt or want to take coaching in lab 2 or lab 1 can contact the gorab directly no problem yeah because um, like uh, grateful you should be great like you can be kind of a grateful to uh, nigam because uh, you know he asked me because uh, i'm actually a little busy because i take uh, coachings like because as you see it's a lockdown so i am taking coaching so kavan and class too so yeah so a lot of people have joined and i'm taking so today also i have class at 8:30 indian time you know right so yeah today is part of neurology yesterday i did neurology and i have to continue neurology today and finish it up okay right, i anyways. think everyone's doubt is clear we can uh, end here gorav yeah probably yes we can because it's anyways yeah a uh, kartik is on having last uh, uh, doubt can we see that is it true I that mean, the us citizens are preferred for the nhs job no no not really not uh, i am losing I, 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 i'm losing your voice actually dr kartik please share the content yeah Gaurav. actually i was asking that if i want to do mrcm should i start from the like the very basic like fi1 or fi2 just go through fi2 just go through fi2 no issues or you can what you can do is you can write a rcm in india and then enter into the plab route anything anyways you write plab1 then write a rcm then write a fi uh, plab2 and then come here or write a rcm first then write plab anyways anyways is okay I think everyone's doubt is over now, Goro. Yeah, probably. Anybody else who has so any other? So I thing? have to give plan. Like, is it compulsory to go for MRCM or? No, I, I have already the MRCM exam no, directly. No. Yeah, yeah, you can give MRCM directly. You can pass all the three steps, and then you can come and work as a ST one or ST two or ST three, whatever field that you want to choose for. All right. But Gaurav, so, what you will you what you will suggest? MRCS or MRCP is good or PLAB route is good? I would suggest PLAB route is good than MRCP MRCS. Yes, okay. because first thing is MRCP MRCS needs a lot of training back in India as well. Additionally, what you need to do is to when you are doing an MRCP basis, right, the third step and or MRCS second step, it's not that really easy to pass because you you will be judged on a UK environment. but you are working in an indian environment all right so judging is done based on the uk protocols but you are working in the indian protocol system so it's not that easy to pass obviously people do pass that it's not like people do not pass they do but it's difficult all right it's difficult additionally um, while you are entering into the fi2 you will be independent you will be working here you will be understanding how the training program works you will be making contacts all right you will be making contacts you will be um, looking out for the uh, candidates you will be looking out for the consultants and um, it would become it becomes a little easier for sure all right so for people uh, those who were asking for few competencies pathway all right i have put up few pathways list all right you see this is a general basic list all right this is the basic general list which do uh, which we generally follow here all right so once you are done with an fi2 all right you will be recruited as a ct1 all right or people call it st1 anything is fine all right ct1 so when you are done with your ct1 all right pass mrcp either here or you can do it here or you can do it even here doesn't matter all right the important part is once you are entering into the spe specialist training you would have done your entire mrcp mrcs or anything all right mrcp mrcs or anything all right this is what i was telling you so once you jump from one branch to another branch or one branch to another branch the salary keeps increasing though you are in a training field your salary keeps increasing it's not like india all right the salary keeps increasing for a very great amount of period all right a lot of money increases not less all right this is general surgery all right this is general surgery so once you are done your two years of co training all right once you are done your two years of co training you do the intermediate training for two years then you do your final staging your final staging is probably kind of an examination that you can think all right it's an examination for the intermediate stage and your final two is the sixth seventh the three sixth seventh and eighth is your super specialization all right super specialization if you want to choose any particular field that you want to excel in you can do it from the year 6 7th and 8 all right this is 
dermatology all right people just want to choose derma all right this is the dermatology training so this is a simple way of training all right dermatology but there are other pathways as well all right as i've already shown you you can see here it is written foundation competencies this means you have done your fi2 and you have get got your all the competencies signed all right so then either you either you can take this two year course or you can take this three year course all right this three year course is basically acute care of the common stems on pediatrics level 1 dermatology only but pediatrics level 1 dermatology and the acute care common stem all right depends people a lot of people who take this three years are better than people those who take this two year better doesn't mean that you will not find a job all right i'm saying just better because you have learned something extra which this two year people would not have learned all right that's all then you give here your specialist uh, examinations for dermatology enter into the specialist training and complete your core training the sixth and seventh year the last two years are basically for your super specialization if you want to all right same thing for the here neurology all right neurology is different two years here and the three years from here all right same thing this one is sub speciality in neurology all right this year is sub speciality which specific neurology thing that you want to do probably you want to go for stem brain stem all right probably you just want to go for uh, medicine or you want to just go for acute neurology so there are many different specialists under it sub speciality like stroke medicine will be different in neurology all right stroke medicine will be different so you can go for a different different subspeciality which you can take from st st from this on from this onwards to this onwards so it's like kind of a super speciality already neurology is specialist training then you can choose even subspeciality which will be your super specialist training directly all right this is neurosurgery all right this is neurosurgery training same ways nothing different nothing specific all right you see here you can see general neurosurgery training all right then you can choose your final neurosurgery training where you'll be choosing your um which specialist brands that you want to and then it's your special interest training all right so it is divided into that way i haven't put everything i have put only few things all right this is pediatrics all right this is pediatrics so you have done your two years of core training all right third year is your examination all right this is pediatrics is different from other other things all right specialist training is only for two years all right only for two years this is your super speciality six seven eight all right this is your super speciality okay this is um uh, this is uh, what uh for, i forgot what is what is this for uh, this is gynecology uh, yeah this is obg right this is obg sorry yeah, gynecology. Yeah. all right so here also you can see this is your specialist training you have become a ops gyne here all right then you can choose your super speciality all right super speciality all right either you can stop here because that will be a fellowship going into super speciality either you can stop here and be work like an md or an ms all right or if you want to go into super speciality you can do later on all right you can do later on it's not necessarily that you have to continue doing it immediately one after another all right you can stop here and then you can continue for working for some time when you feel like you want fellowship you can go for it if you don't feel like you should you can stop it all right here this is what i'm calling it this is called as acute internal medicine all right acute internal medicine so you do your core training for two years and then you directly choose your subspeciality suppose cardiology all right cardiology stroke medicine uh, pre hospital emergency medicine you can choose any of them all right you can choose any of them and directly you can enter into that field so i have just I put think, few things to understand and okay. but there are many different kinds of field that you can choose from i think or of pediatrics is the only subject which is having less years i think two years only yeah even obsgyne even obsgyne because you can stop after doing it even ops okay. gyne you can stop after doing it do, do we have psychiatry sir okay yeah, do we we do we uh, sorry i forgot i just i wanted to put psychiatry i think i just forgot putting psychiatry give me one second i'll just put it it won't take much time uh, general psychiatry right one second yeah uh, the training part is okay oh where should i put it then Goro, already we are having three videos. You can please join that three video and send me the drive link. Okay, I will upload it in website. Yeah, probably I'll do that. Don't worry. Okay. All right. So this is the uh, yeah. So this is the uh, what do you call? Yeah, the psychiatry. Okay, psychiatry is having one year only. Is good. Which is having one year? Oh, the specialist training. Yes, the specialist training is only for a year. Yeah. In yeah. Psychiatry, psychiatry the specialist is, training is. So it means psychiatrist is having the least year, and then. 
followed by pediatrics and the gynecology uh, this is a broad uh, very broad things rheumatology has got even less respiratory is also less renal is also less depends there are a lot of uh, many 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 branches all right there is pediatric cardiology as well pediatric okay. cardiology pediatric surgery so you are directly entering into super specialist all right and like i pediatric... think uh, doing pg from uh, uk is already valid in india right we can practice yeah. in india directly yes once you get mrcp mrcs and everything you can directly you can register yourself and then you are valid yeah you can okay all right I so think here everyone's is doubt is clear this is super specialist yeah yeah i believe so so Thank we you, can sir. stop Okay, Gaurav, you can just go to M for PG website and show them from where they can download. Just or I will uh, be showing. Yeah, yeah, you you can show them because I don't know where is it. All right, guys. So okay. that was all of it. All right. If you have any doubts, I've already mentioned my email ID. You can connect with me. All right. Uh, you can connect okay, with guys. me and. Uh, yeah, we can discuss it further yeah yeah we can connect with it and then we can discuss it further all right if you have any uh, okay. special doubt if anyone right. also want to take uh, coaching for club one or club two can contact gora directly and uh, if you miss this video you can download from here uh, i'll show you can see the screen where m4 pg website go to store and you can see here uh, uh, about lab it will be uploaded by 28th of april and it is free to download you can download and if you want to visit more session you can go to learn pet and i think uh, upcomings and on 30th we are having i think uh, uh, 30th we are having uh, uh, with dr aditya prasad padi who is also a resident of ms general surgery planning for mch at 8 30 pm you have to register here okay the link will be available from uh at uh, today i think at uh, by 11 o'clock it will be ready you can download okay gorov thank you yeah thanks guys so that was it i hope you guys are staying safe back in india all right so be stay safe stay uh, keep your family also safe all right see you guys bye bye thank you thank you for the nice introduction gorov okay you can stop the recording